Hello and welcome to our mini-series, Inventor Back to Basics. Today we're going to continue on where we left off with our previous mini-series video. We're going to continue the second part of Sketches. One area of the sketching environment that can be an advantage and at the same time a hindrance is reference dimensions. And some people aren't familiar with what the term reference dimension refers to. It's actually a duplicate dimension that already exists somewhere else in the sketch and they're denoted by the sketch environment by putting parentheses around that dimension. Now Inventor does this for you automatically when that is an unnecessary dimension. So looking at the example sketch here we have a lot of duplicate or reference dimensions. For example the 90 degree dimension that identifies the angle between the perpendicular lines. Well that control can be done by a constraint and reducing a dimension display. Exaggerating this to a much larger point, you have something like this where there's not only duplicate dimensions for other dimensions, there's duplicate dimensions for the constraints. And this is just a bad practice. It's very time consuming and very confusing. While this is not necessarily a good practice, sometimes it is necessary to communicate design intent and for clarity. In those respects, duplicate dimensions can be allowed. For example, in the interest of clarity and design intent, the thickness of this bracket has been duplicated down here on the end to show that that thickness is uniform. You could also do the same by applying a reference dimension in between the two radiuses to make sure that it's understood that the 0.75 thickness is carried throughout the part. Another advantage inside the sketch environment and another best practice is to name your dimensions during the process of creating them. Now if you've not done this for existing sketches, it's easily fixed. You simply edit the value of the dimension. You can type in the name of the dimension and equals whatever that value is. For example, when I create a dimension on the fly and just place that dimension and accept the value, I forgot to name it. So I can come back in edit that dimension, type in the name of the dimension, put in the equal sign and the value and it will do a twofold operation. It will name that parameter or that dimension and it will apply that value. Another best practice in the sketch environment is to set up equations between your dimensions to reference each other. So when you're creating a dimension for example the thickness of this bracket we want to make sure it's carried throughout and if it's changed in one location we want it to change here as well when we want that kind of reference behavior to take place during the edit operation of this dimension we can reference the controlling dimension and that's going to be this other 0.75 out here at the far right when I click on that it shows me the name of the dimension that we applied previously what this does is anytime the source dimension changes, it drives this behavior in the destination dimension. So you'll see it has a designation of fx colon and then the value of that dimension. The fx colon marker indicates there's an equation or a reference driving this dimension. So now if I edit the source dimension, the change is carried throughout the part. 